All right, four weeks to go for the test, and uh, we've uh, we've lost some members, but we're going to uh, keep on going, and uh, we're just going to move on through that. So uh, today, uh, do we have any injuries first off? Any injuries? None? Okay, well, your ankle. Keep. It's your job now. If I start having you jump around, don't jump around. You know, you, you have to ma manage your own injury, okay? Um, we have one training Nitsubo, I think, here. Anybody else got a Nitsubo or the parts to make one? Just like that, okay? Uh, then we might actually end up making some practice ones real quick. So we'll come back online when we're ready to rock and roll. All right, we're going to make a practice Nitsubo. We have approximately 20 feet, maybe? 20 foot of cord, something like that. I ran around and got a couple of discs. Um, these are just the metal discs, uh, washers. And we're going to tie a bowline on these washers. All right, so we go through and um, we're going to tie a bowline. Your standard bowline. Rabbit goes up the tree, wrap the hole around the tree, back down, tie. Like so, we got a bowline. All right. So we're going to do a similar thing. May I borrow a Uwara stick? Standard Uwara stick. We're going to tie, you can start out tying almost any knot you want, and we're going to make it work really nicely. Let's just tie a square knot the best we can. A square knot. So it's on, on the stick itself. And then we're going to start putting... loops like this, half inch, half hitches, pulling them tight so that we're in the center of the UR stick like so. And then we'll have technique in just a minute. Okay, we have tied, in this case, this is a, a previous one of about eh, 20 years, um, practice uh, Nitsubo weight, but we've uh, used uh, rings and anything we could find. What we want to do is be able to have enough weight to simulate the motion well, but not enough weight to hurt each other because we're going to actually practice with this. So when you throw it out there and hit somebody, you don't want to really hurt them. Too. The first thing we're going to learn to do <coughs> is you'll notice that there's a knot in my cord right below my finger. Notice that that knot finds the length of my arm with my arm completely extended and my weight is just above the ground. So you want to put a an index knot there. And that's important because you can come up and, well, you don't have a cup on, do you? No. Oh, darn. I hit him right in the, you know what, without a cup. Sorry about that. Um, was lightly, though. So as I'm retracting this, I can find that knot and I know exactly where I am, right? So you can put, I, I know, I stopped on purpose. The, um, so you end up with two knots, ultimately. The first knot is is so you can swing it close to the ground low and let it come out. The second knot you're going to put in is going to be where you're about right about there. Okay? So your hand your arm is horizontal to the ground and your weight still clears it. That's where you need a second knot. So I'm going to put a second knot on this one myself. And um, this will be utilitarian to overhand throws. We hold a Nitsubo in our left hand, our non-favored hand, and the weight in our favored hand. And that knot that I just tied might be just a shade bit along, maybe not. Um, it, it, it'll work out pretty well. I'd, I'd probably move this down if this was an operational version. I might move that knot down just a little bit for me. But you'll get comfortable with where your knot is going to be as you work with the tool. The first thing we're going to learn with the tool is what we call an overhead bonk. The tool is utilized like this, and I'm, I'm creating an arc, so I actually want to get it out there and tune it so it hits out over, right over the head. If we look at Fred for a minute, okay, so I've got Fred out here. I want to come down over the top of Fred and hit him like that. Now I let it feed out easily. You wouldn't normally do that. You'd find the right distance you want and then bring it in for an attack. Very utilitarian is if I have a gun pointed at me, come on over this to him for a second so I can get an angle. You can wrap up a gun pretty quickly, as you can see. All right, now we'll point it back at me again, uh, undo me. 
Yes. A real Nitsa bow has really thin line on it, so it wraps really nicely. So as you come in to wrap this up, and that hurt a bit. The, uh, so as you come in to wrap this up, you can see how nice that is, and you have enough to pull it offline and then attack this way. And you, you know, he can try to bring it back towards me, and this gets very difficult till you come in and attack his hands, and that weapon is yours. Okay? He decides to get frisky. You can do. You can do the same thing with the other end that you did. Okay? Or bonk him. Okay? There's your weapon. But it likes to wrap up quite nicely. So in our practice, here's what we're going to do. We're going to learn, doesn't it get sticky and just wrap all up in there? It's amazing how well that really works. Okay. So in our practice, we're going to have a partner. And with your practice tool, why don't you stick out your arm for me? So we're going to practice this. That's what we're going to try to do. And see, I've, I've kind of got a hold of him a little bit. I mean, I really would have banged away at him and then clear it off and you practice again. So what you want to get to doing is you find your knot and you wrap that puppy up, okay? Notice how nice that was? And you find out, we can do it around necks and heads and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to pair up and do that. You guys keep going. I'm just going to do commentary. For those of us on the internet, we actually have learned that our overhead throw and wrapping around arms and also hitting the top of the head. And now we're practicing uh, the first time to actually wrap th this around a weapon. Uh, teaching it's a little easier when they're offline like this or pointing the other way. If you needed to, if they're pointing at somebody, you don't want them to shoot and you want to make sure that you can get a hold of that quickly, this can be an excellent tool to do so. Okay. And that's how you do that. So we'll watch for a few minutes. If you can get it, if you're thinking about this, Everybody's kind of targeting down here, and you really don't want to do that. You want to target midway, and it wraps all over the place. So think about coming, Christian, think about coming somewhere in the middle part of the weapon, by the forward hand. That'll work. And yes, as we pull them, the weapon will sweep us. Um, when we pull normally, we're going to pull off line. They don't know how to do the pull just yet, but you pull off line so you keep the weapon away from you. You know what I mean by pulling off, you pull off line like that. Yeah. You don't pull into you pull off line and that forces the muzzle away from you. Well, yeah, oh. say, yeah. He's, he's likely to squeeze one off. Yeah, well a lot of times they lose the weapon. It comes right out of their hands because they're not expecting it. You get a good jerk going on, pop, and, and with a real one, <coughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. A little higher speed will help. In, in the in the wrapping, so if you want to pick up your, go ahead and let go. If you want to pick this up, pick up the speed a little bit. Okay, and I swept myself, but you see what you do? You pick up the speed just a little bit, and it will we'll tend to want to wrap it a little easier. Yeah. Yes. They gave the rope burn. <laughs> yes. Sorry. It, uh, on the real rope, it's really thin, like your like Barney's choke cord. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Check this out. Can you imagine that coming and grabbing you? I couldn't. I don't want to. Okay. So the real version has this really, really narrow cord, which we'll have next week to show you some real versions. We're going to put those together. Yeah, there you go, Barn. That's nice. Of course, you'll move forward, too, with the jerk, but you'll learn that lesson later. The big thing here is just get the wrap.
Oh yeah, that was. <laughs> I don't know if the internet people saw that, but it went all the way around, back around, and hit him in the groin. Kind of like that. When you go to let it, all of it out, instead of doing it um, one on this side, the, um, like we we do with knife on a rope, we control it with our fingers. Well, this rope is so fine it will just burn right through your hands. So what you want to do is you want to open your you, you let it flow between your fingers and just to put a little bit of drag on it. So you don't want to go completely all out because a lot of times it doesn't have that kind of wrap to it. It does now. It's amazing. So when I do it, so I try to do that. So you slow it down ever so you get it speed wise, but once it gets there, slow it down a little bit. I'm going to try one more time. amazing how sticky that I mean and you do pick cord for stickiness when you go ahead keep going when you do talk about working with cord like this you want to experiment with the type of cord that you use um, stickiness is always very important There you go. Nice, Larry. You notice how when you slowed it down a little bit after you had the speed up, the thing was. Plus feeding out through the hands. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's amazing how much force you can get on that, isn't it? <laughs> but again, like you say, you've got to pull when it starts. Right. To slow down, wrap. Yep. When it starts to slow, it's wrapping. That's when you want to start to pull. When you have our regular weight on. When you, when you have a regular weight on, it pulls the cord right out for you. I mean, it just, and it, it, whew, it, it's got some high velocity to it. For those on the internet, this tool actually, you'll see it next week, hopefully, when it hits the board, it shatters things. It lays huge dents. I used to do demonstrations where I'd break three quarter inch plywood with this thing. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Christian, okay, you're going to take your you're going to take your nitsubo, and we wind our cord up anyway around this nitsubo. This is normally how you carry your nitsubo. If I have to deploy my nitsubo, I put the line between here, and now I'm deployed. Now, if he threatens me with that blade, yeah, you're out and fast. Real nitsubo would have shattered that hand, right? And so if I miss, it doesn't matter. Come on in. Look at this. I don't want to hit you, but <laughs> look at what I have on him, right? Okay. Then he bends over like that. You can just let your thing go bunk. He's done. He's a piece of meat. So we're going to learn with your light ones. We'll pair back up on our original pairs again. But I want you to get used to holding this back. You have it midway in your back, like so, and you're here. This is going to come out and try to hit that blade. So I did it over here. I can come back and hit it on the other side. You want to come out horizontal and hit that. You try to feed it out of your back hand to hit horizontal and then come up over the top. Now remember, this is a heavy weight. You don't want it to hit you in the back of the head. <laughs> it's like the key lesson. Boom, boom. Okay, your guys won't be so bad. You, you, you so, be careful on the velocity, do you think? Right, so what you want to do when you come out, see I'm opening my hand, I'm letting my arm be way over here. If you were my opponent, I'm here making sure I can recover. So that hit comes here and over the head to there. You can immediately pick it back up again, but you're right in here, okay? So let's give that a try, one last, one last skill set. So we'll give it a try. Okay, go ahead and turn that off. This is fun stuff though, huh? I love it. And we were the inventors of this. Nobody else has this tool. It's originated with us. Can you tell them how you name it? Y yes, I can do that. On the internet? No, not on the internet. Oh, sure I will. Okay. So, 
this tool is, of course, a, a, a roped tool. What we'll learn next week is as you're here, you can actually throw this out. Don't worry, the cameraman. Did we lose that? The cameraman ducked. But they don't have to. I'm not going to hit my own camera. But you can see how nicely that's coming right in at them. With a significant weight, light cord, right on through somebody. And this is kind of short. You can get much longer than this. If you get surrounded, obviously it comes around, you know. Think of somebody walking in on that, right? Until you're ready to let it out and snag people and hit them. Nitsubo, fun tool. All right, let's go see what everybody learned. Larry Sensei, what did you learn you like today? About the versatility of Nitsubo. Uh -huh. I mean, it has all sorts of, you can use it as a defensive weapon, offensive weapon, and you can create it easily. We're going to develop a, or show a lot more of the technique through the, hopefully, the next couple of lessons anyway, of the Nitsubo, but it's almost unlimited tool. Uh, and Larry, since I asked me how the, we got the name, I actually invented this thing. <laughs> it's partially off of a ninjutsu weapon, the end, the rope, Yawara stick, put them together. What do you call it? I didn't know what we call it because it's not a traditional weapon. So I said, it's pretty neat, little bitty bow. It's an Ichibo. That's how we got it. Aaron Sensei, what did you learn you liked? Uh, just the versatility of the weapon, overhand, underhand. Um, snagging weapons? Snagging weapons. Oh, yeah. Wait, All kinds of stuff. handguns on arms. Oh, good stuff. I like the snagging weapons. Yeah? Yeah, that's Yeah, fun. that's fun stuff. Huh? Yeah. Imagine blow guns, anything long. Oh, that's great. I liked how easy it was to get out and use. Mm -hmm. You just roll it out. Just roll it out. And, of course, let me put this back on. If the police ever find you with such said device... And they want to know what said device is. Anjig Bonifas have to build things, right? We have like tasks, we build fences, we build things that have to be lined up, right? That's a plumb bob, right? That's right. That's all it is. And if you're into the new age thing, it's power crystals. <laughs> you can detect ores with this, don't you know? So you can put out like if your hands hurt, you do this over, we'll see which way it's going to really turn. And if the hand really is hurt, you'll always give them something else to think about that'll hurt. It takes the pain away. So there you go. Oh. I, I definitely like the offensive side of it. And oh, yeah. Being able to hit your targets at a distance. At a and distance. Just shock the hell out of somebody. Yeah, I mean, these things hurt as it is. The practice ones, I yeah. can only imagine what the... The real one. But yeah. we're going to do that this afternoon. Right on. Mateus, what did you learn you liked? Uh, I like the practicality of being able to construct this from... Just about almost anything. Shoestring, your set of keys, uh, a pencil, pen, any of that stuff, right? And you're, you're in there. Carabiner. Yeah, kind of cool stuff. All right, behind the scenes cameraman, the secret camera woman, what did you learn you liked? How to work the camera? No. I, um, no, also, like, like Matea said, the whole notion that you can mm -hmm. make it out of pretty much anything so you can have a weapon with you out of just simple well, stuff that you've yeah, got. Cool stuff. Yeah, cool. Anybody have any questions? Nope. Okay. Till next time, America will bow out. Thank you very much. Bye. That's it.